Hi, everyone. Today we are going to wrap up our discussion on conservation of angular momentum. This is going to be our very last video for this semester. So hopefully you have found these videos to be helpful. And always remember that if you have questions, feel free to reach out so that I can help you to the best of my ability. So in this question, we have a 1.4 kilogram solid potter's wheel. So 1.4 kilogram solid potter's wheel has a radius of 23 centimeters. The disc is freely rotating at an angular speed of 14 radians per second when a 200 gram clump of clay is dropped from above to land on the very edge of the wheel. What is the new angular speed at which the disc and clay rotate together? So in this situation, we have our wheel and our wheel is rotating at first. Okay. So we have our, and that's just going like this. And that's going to be our before, because this is kind of a collision question. And then after we end up having a lump of clay has been dropped onto that, okay? So there's our lump of clay and it still is spinning. But what's going to end up happening? So if we think through this conceptually, we know that it's spinning and then we add to the mass. So therefore we're probably going to end up decreasing in our angular velocity, okay? Or in our angular speed, okay? So when we look at this, we know that our momentum the sum of our momentum initial is equal to the sum of our momentum final, okay? So what is our momentum in the beginning? In the beginning, we have just our wheel, and our wheel is spinning at, um, we have our wheel is spinning at 14 radians per second, and we're looking at our um, rotational inertia. So we have I, okay, I omega, and that's for our wheel initial, plus I omega initial, and that's for our clay, is equal to I omega final, okay? Um, and that's for our wheel, plus I omega final dealing with our clay. Okay, so in the beginning, so we're looking at our disc. So if this is a disc right here, we want to figure out our eye of our disc. And our eye of our disc is one half m r squared. So that's going to be equal to one half times our mass, which is 1.4 times 0.23 squared. And that's going to end up giving me 0 0.037. So we have one half times 1.4 times 0.23 squared, okay? So when I go ahead and I'm going to put that into my equation, we have 0.037 times 14, which is our radians per second, plus zero, because we don't have our rotational um, rotational velocity at that point for the clay, okay? Um, and we're going to do that equals rotational inertia after, which is going to be 0 0.037 omega final plus our inertia for our clay. So if we look at our, our clay, that's going to be our point mass. And so that's going to end up being mR squared. Okay. And so that's going to be our mass is 0.2. And then our, our, our R is 0.23 because it's at the very edge of the wheel. Okay. So we end up getting this is 0.2 times 0.23 squared, okay, omega final. 
and the omega final for both of them is going to be the same, okay? So when we go ahead and add that together, we have 0.23 squared times 0.2, and then add 0.037 to that, I end up getting 0 0.04758 omega final, and then 0.518 over here. So I end up getting that my omega final is equal to 10.9 radians per second. So let's look at this next question. We have a 0.3 kilogram ball is tied to an 80 centimeter long string, which is then tied to a support to hang down freely. Hanging directly next to the ball is a long thin rod of mass 1.4 kilograms and a length of 80 centimeters. So that rod and the string are the same exact length which is also free to rotate about a support through the upper end. The entire setup is shown in the diagram to the right. The ball is pulled back some distance from the position shown and released to swing downward and collide with the bottom of the rod. The ball is moving 3.2 meters per second when it collides with the rod and the collision brings the ball to a stop. At what angular velocity does the rod swing immediately after the collision? Okay, so in this case, we need to, we have basically this string is pulled back, okay, and then it's dropped, it's moved forward, and so it's going to hit the rod and cause the rod to spin around, but the ball is going to stay, okay? So this is an angular momentum problem again. We have our angular momentum initial is equal to our angular momentum final, okay? So something that we need to recognize is we need to figure out what is our, um, our rotational inertia because we have our rotational inertia of our ball times our angular velocity plus zero. And the reason it's zero is because the rod is not moving and the rod is, so the rod has no angular momentum, and then equals to zero, because now the string ball system has no angular momentum, plus our rotational inertia of our rod times omega, okay? So some things that we need to point out. First, we need to point out that the um, angular momentum of a point, okay, because we're really just looking at that point, is equal to I omega, okay? And that's equal to MR squared omega, which is equal to MR squared times V divided by R. So that's equal to, if everything cancels, RMV, okay? And we're looking at our... And so we're looking at our perpendicular radius. And when we look at that, this is actually equivalent to R times our momentum of our point. Okay. So that's just something that's worth noting in this situation. When we go over here, we end up getting, um, if it's RMV, then we end up having our point eight meters times our mass, which is 0 0.3 kilograms, times our velocity, okay, um, which is 3.2 meters per second, is equal to our I. So what is our I of our rod? Well, I of a rod is equal to one-third ml squared one-third ml squared. So it's equal to one-third times 0.4 times 0.8 squared plus or times omega, okay? So we're going to solve for omega there, and we end up getting that our angular velocity of our rod in this situation is 2.57 
radians per second. Now, something that has come up in some of the questions that people have had through these videos is something about our units. So in some of these questions, because I'm trying to get them done, I'm not writing all of our units, but it would be important for you to notice this is our meters, okay? This right here is our mass, so that's going to be kilograms. This right here is our velocity, and that's going to end up being in meters per second, okay? So then over here, we end up having our mass is in kilograms. Okay, and then, and here it's not 0.4, it's 1.4. Um, and then our 0.8 is in meters, okay? And making sure that you're paying attention to things canceling. So we end up having meters squared times kilograms per second. And then on one side, we have kilograms times meters. So we are going to end up canceling our kilograms and we're going to cancel one of our meters, and we're going to end up getting our radians per second in the end, okay? So question number 21 states a 25 gram particle is moving at a speed of 4.2 meters per second in the positive y direction across a frictionless xy plane. When the particle is at 3.0 meters and 0, 0.0 meters, Calculate its angular momentum relative to the origin. So remember, in our last question, we said that our angular momentum of our point is equal to our perpendicular, the perpendicular radius times m times v is something that we looked at. So relative to the origin, if we're looking at our mass, um, the particle is 25 grams, 4.2 meters per second, then I'm looking at this in terms of my radius, and the radius is going to be 3. My mass is 0.025, okay? And then I have my velocity is 4.2 meters per second, okay? And then that was going to be our mass is kilograms. Okay, so in this case, we have our system, and our system, this is our mass, and it's moving, it's at your three, so one, two, three, and it's moving this way, 4.2 meters per second, okay? Um, so relative to the point zero, two, so if we're looking at zero, two, we're looking at relative to this point right here, okay? Relative to that point, well, what's the perpendicular distance? The perpendicular distance is three, then 0 0.025, then 4.2 meters per second, and this is kilograms. So in both of these cases, our momentum is going to be 0.315 kilograms times meters squared, because this was meters per second. And then this is 0.315 kilograms times meters squared per second. And then in our last one, it's relative to 0.35. So here we're looking at 0.3. So we're looking at relative to here. Well, there is no perpendicular distance. So if we have our perpendicular radius times m times v, then there's no perpendicular distance. So our angular momentum relative to 3, 5 is going to be 0. Now looking at this very last question, Okay, and congratulations, you've made it to your very last in-class practice problem for the semester. It says a 60 centimeter long 800 gram stick rests on a frictionless table free to pivot about one end. 
which is fixed in place to act as an axis of rotation. The stick is hit in the center by a 50 gram ball. So we have our 60 centimeters, 800 grams. It's hit in the center by an 850 gram ball at 12 meters per second in direction perpendicular to the stick's length. If the ball adheres to the stick, so it sticks to the stick, calculate their rotational speed after the collision. So we have our angular momentum initial and our angular momentum final, and they are equivalent to each other. So we have the perpendicular radius times the momentum of our ball because the ball is moving, okay? But the stick is not moving. The stick is standing still is equal to I, okay, the rotational inertia of the whole system, omega final. So here we end up having, we're trying to figure out, um, calculate their rotational speed after the collision. So we have R perpendicular. R perpendicular is 0.3. And the reason R perpendicular is 0.3 centimeters is because it hits in the, or 0.3 meters, is because it hits in the dead center times mass times the velocity. Well, the mass is 0.05 kilograms and the velocity is 12 meters per second is equal to I. So what is our I? Our I here is going to be the rotational inertia of the rod, which is one third ML squared plus the rotational inertia of the point mass, okay? So we end up getting one-third times 0.8 times 0.6, and that's squared, plus 0 0.05 times 0.3 squared times omega final. And that ends up giving us that our omega final is equal to 1.79 radians per second. Okay. So in this situation, we have a rod. The rod gets the rod it gets hit by this ball. Okay. And we have linked our we have our linear velocity basically of that ball, that point mass that is going to end up giving us our momentum. So we have our R perpendicular times our momentum plus zero. And the reason it's zero is because the rod is not moving, so it has no momentum, is equal to the rotational inertia of the whole system because they've stuck together. So it's the sum of the rotational inertia times the omega final because they're both going the same velocity, okay? This is a very important type of, type of question and you're going to see questions like this in the future. Um, so when you're doing your practice, if you're seeing a question like this, just understand that it's a really important type of question. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, reach out if you have any questions.